Nancy Birdburn and today we are talking about particles again. So in the past weeks we've seen how to like create the particles, how to manipulate their age and life. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna color our particles. So there's many ways to color your particles. You can color each of them separately. You can also give them all the same colors at the same time. So there's a bit of variance in there. So that's what we're gonna do today. First, if you haven't already, go get yourself a particle system. It is important that your particles have an image to them. So get a drawing and attach it to them. If you don't know how to do that, check out the previous videos. You're gonna find out. So I have my little sparkles that I always use. And to color them, I will go to my sprite emitter, go to the rendering tab. And last time what we explored was the rendering strategy uh, but today what we're gonna do is skip the transformation we're gonna go to coloring so we're gonna use the coloring strategy part of the sprite emitter first we're going to explore the coloring strategy drop down so if you click on the drop down you have used drawing color this is pretty simple it's just gonna use the original drawing colors that you have in your drawing so if your particles were blue in your drawing well they're gonna show up blue like nothing complicated here but next we have map RGB and map RGBA so what does that mean so pretty simple RGB stands for red green and blue and RGBA stands for red green blue and alpha so basically if you want to play with the colors of your particles and not the opacity then just use RGB but if you also want to edit the transparency like opacity or alpha <laughs> of these particles then you have to use the RGBA and then you have based on age or based on frame. So age, like we saw last time, is when you kind of give your particles a life in their timeline. Like it goes from example from frame one to 12, but then it's not really timing. It's just each individual particles is gonna have that lifespan. If you go per frame, then it depends on what you're gonna have in your timeline. So first I'm gonna use map RGBA based on frame because it's the easiest to demonstrate. All right, and I'm gonna bring up my timeline. As usual, if you wanna find your sprite emitter in your timeline, you just click here. And then you press O to find it in your timeline. I have it here. And if you go down, 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 you're gonna see the colors. So this is where you go to edit your colors. So I'm gonna go here and make a keyframe. I pressed F6, but you can also right click and go to insert keyframe, or you can also just click on these little button here. Just saying. So for now, they're just gonna be um, white. But if I go on frame 10, for example, and I put a keyframe and I change the color by double clicking here. I mean, you can change the color by changing the numbers, but yeah, doesn't speak to me that much. I'd rather click on the rectangle here. And if you click on that rectangle, it's going to change the color of all your particles at once. So I'm gonna get a nice little yellow. And the reason why I put the keyframe before I change the color is just because if you don't, sometimes if you go, for example, to another frame and you change the color, like not all of the parameters will get the keyframe so sometimes if you go here and then you make another keyframe like the interpolation might get weird so that's why i always prefer to just add the keyframe first and then change my color if that's what i wanted so now because i chose map rgba based on frame it means that all my particles will change at the same time which is great for lots of effects next what we're going to do is instead of having all the particles change color at once we're going to have them kind of change color throughout their lives instead so you're gonna have multiple colors showing up at the same time. So I'm gonna go back in my sprite emitter, in my rendering, coloring strategy. Instead of having it based on frame, I'm gonna base it on age. And that's because my particles are like five or six frame long, I think. That's because of their lifespan that I gave them with the drawings. Like, yeah, they're, they kind of die after 10 frame. So I just wanna make sure that my colors also don't change after 10 frame because otherwise they're gonna be pretty similar. So I'm just gonna take all these frames and bring them a bit closer to each other. But that really depends on how old your particles are. But uh, yeah, so I did this. So now it means that if we follow one particle in particular, <laughs> like this one, for example, as it goes through its life, it will evolve in color. So now if I make it play, you're gonna see that all the particles are different, which makes for more random, which looks super cool. All right, so how can you use that if you had water or rain or little fire drops? Uh, you can do lots of things with this coloring strategy and just uh, playing with the colors. It's incredible how all you can achieve with this. So it might seem simple, but it opens up a lot of possibilities. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed coloring your little particles and I'll see you again next week. Bye bye.